You are a seer, a scryer, and you aspire to use your holy vessel, your holy temple, your body, as a way to communicate with the gods and see through symbology, numerology, geometry, the voice of God, and be able to interpret it. And your mother and many other energies around you are going to explain something to you that will hopefully help you understand yourself, God, and this world of symbology. If you are here, you're meant to hear this message and you're going to hear some important things about being the master of the net, the World Wide Web, and how our mind works and how to use your mind to hear God. If you are becoming a scryer yourself, it's important to keep yourself holy. And this includes our thoughts. And so let's look at your pieces in an abstract mode. This is your piece removed from the darkness and only seeing the light. Let's play Where's Waldo or I Spy. Do you see the word C? S E E. What sacred geometrical shapes do you see? Being able to see shapes, numbers, and body language and energies are part of the program. The first thing I always look for are opposites and some connection between off and on, light and dark. This piece right here reflects that you have a mind which can go anywhere if you cut your head off. So your head is being cut off from an energy below you that looks like the Persian king from the movie 300. If we can cut our head off from the ego, connected to the World Wide Web, the Wicked Witch of the West, the green reptilian ego, then our mind can literally connect to King Solomon or any mind that was once connected to God. This is the ring of power. And so the ring of power is around your neck and the ring of power is surrendering yourself before you can hear the voice that is outside of yourself. This second piece reflects a dual reality. We can see opposites here. You on the right, your mother on the left. You have a pointy long hat. Your mother has a more rectangular hat that looks like a computer screen, artificial intelligence. You have a DNA strand. You have an angel in your mind driving your emotions and giving you thoughts, showing you what to think, say, and do. The seer has the ability to go outside of belief systems and emotions in order to see a truth or c contact God's goddesses through a zero point energy. The zero point energy is the white bird. This is a reflection that we must become invisible and go through the eye of the needle before truth can be revealed. Now, here you are in a boat that's a dragon and you're holding a resurrection stone with the number 23 on it. 23 was mentioned in the Bible. Uh, the oracle was mentioned in the Bible 23 times. So this is an oracle and a seer, someone who can speak the voice of God. This is also a boat, and this boat is the Vesica Piscis. It is the Eye of the Needle. It is the Egyptian Book of Gates. It is a spaceship. It is a pineal gland. It is the, the baptism of water, the baptism of fire. It is the Ankh. It is many things, the boat. And because you're in the boat, this means that you are resurrecting your past, realizing that you aren't you, in order to use your mind and your brain in an invisible way to see truths that are outside of your own understanding. Let's go to Scientology and understand why Scientologists believe that we were 
stolen by a god named Zenu and put into volcanoes. And I'm telling you this for a reason, because it's going to link back to your original pieces. So, King Solomon owned two rings of power. King Solomon is the same character on Lord of the Rings as Sodomon. Solomon, Sodomon. Frodo went to the volcano to let go of a ring of power through fire. The volcano, like in Scientology. The all-seeing eye is reflective of the Vesica Piscis. The two rings of power are a sacred geometrical shape. King Solomon owned rings of power that controlled demons and the jinn. The jinn come from a smokeless vapor that were created before human beings were created. The smokeless vapor comes from the volcano. When we begin to look at symbols within writings and look at their opposites, water and fire, we can see truth in the center, which is the Vesica Piscis, the two rings of power. There's always truth in the center. According to the legend, King Solomon's ring was thrown into the sea and lost. Just like the Lord of the Rings, the hobbit found the ring underwater, then Frodo took it to the fire. Christian mythology or Christian, the Bible, Christian religion says we go through the baptism of water, then we go through the baptism of fire. These, there's some synonymous stories going on here. Zenu was a figure in the Church of Scientology that talks about how we came to earth known as Tijiak and we were our souls were thrown into volcanoes and we were put under mind control in a program to forget who we are and many masters came to remind us who we are through the symbol of the Vesica Piscis this is the eye of the needle that Jesus talks about but if you look in other religions and other myths, you can see this story repeating through sacred geometry. So there's something called the electronic ribbon, which is in your piece, which looks like a DNA. So body thetans are like jinn energy that attached to us and our souls to control our minds, like the angel driving your emotions in your head in the piece where you are looking at your mother. And these operating thetans want to control our minds, diverting us from the truth. And we have to get into the clear and clear these out in order to become powerful. So King Solomon was known as a magician as well. But there's so much more to the story of Solomon as an allegory than an actual occurrence. If you think of the name Solomon, Saul means sun or soul, and Oman actually spells out moon. Let's look at the movie 300. The Persian king asked for only two things, earth and water. When you think of earth and water, you think of earth and water, unless you are a seer. A seer would not see earth and water. A seer would see body and soul. Selling our body and soul to an operating thetan a liar. Someone who wants to keep us under mind control so we never remember who we are and we are never free. Watch this clip of 300 and look at the symbologies of when the messenger comes to the king and says, will you give this Persian king earth and water? Because if you give the Persian king earth and water, you'll be free, which was a lie. But to be a seer is to be a king, is to be King Solomon, Sodomon. And a seer knows that God speaks to us all the time through elements like the ring of water and the ring of fire. These are the two opposite rings that, that create the Vesica Piscis in the center. The truth is always around you, and all you have to do is be aware of it. So, when the Persian king looked 
at the messenger. A king is a seer. The voice of God speaking always. The wind on the bare feet is the foundation of things. The setting of the sun behind the tree of life reflects the ending of things. The mother and the child is what is important. The children who were warriors is that you were born to fight for what? For freedom, for body and soul. And the wife, the wife who says, think not what a king should do, ask what a free man would do. And because of these little tiny symbols all around him, God told him what to do. He says, you come here with skulls. You insult my queen. You ask for nothing but earth and water. You are asking us to sell our soul, our mind, to a Persian king who wants us to forget how powerful we are. This is blasphemy, many religions will say. It's blasphemy that you would even consider that God would ask you to kill someone when the whole Bible is full of murder. <laughs> but he looks back at his wife, and the wife knew all the signs as well. She was also a seer. God is always talking to us, whether it's on paper, in our heads, or out in our world. And if God tells you to kick someone into a ring of power, a circle, you do it. The transformation from lead to gold or from gray to white is what Gandalf had to go through. Gandalf was Gandalf the Grey. You can see the white queen behind Gandalf, the invisible female always behind. When the male merges with the female energy, you have to go through the baptism of fire. So Gandalf had to fight the fire just as Frodo had to endure Mordor, the fire. And this fire energy is the dragon. It is telling you, look, we have been under a program and a mind control by a Persian narcissistic king, an operating Thetan, who wants to keep you out of the eye of the needle. Cut off the head of the ego. Let go of the skinny Smeagol, which reflects our spirits being starved to death, the Divine Mother being starved, and let it go into the fires of Mordor. And when you reemerge, you will reemerge white, like that white bird in your piece. That white bird is the purification because the person in your head is an operating Thetan who is operating your mind. Above the operating Thetan is the white goose, and the white goose is Isis, the mother. When we go from gray wizard to the white wizard, it is uncomfortable to come out of this program. We go through the nothing, and the nothing feels awful, like the never-ending story. And when we are left with a grain of sand, we suddenly shift to a new world. And here we will have the return of the king. Then the Messiah will return, like in the Bible, and we will find ourselves in a world where all truth is revealed to us and we be can become a seer and a voice of God. God will be our mouth, our hands, and our voice, and our feet, and we will be energized with a very holy energy. This is the Kundalini awakening. Look at this piece. There's a man in the water, baptism of water, gets caught in the net. Jesus said, Let's, uh, let us be fishermen of men. Being caught in the net is being caught in a trap. If you want to come out of the trap, get into the baptism of fire. Here we have the dragon that is the boat. The kundalini is the snake. It's a portal that takes us out of a lower realm into the fire. And what does the teardrop and the flame make when they meet? It makes the number eight the infinity symbol, it makes everlasting life. It makes truth. So resurrecting your past or what Scientologists call auditing your past, 
they say you have a piece of your soul and a volcano, um, will help us to get past the programming and illusion, the mental inventory, how we label things, how we label ourselves, how we see religion, how we see the world. It is not what we think it is. And so the resurrection stone is about becoming invisible, listening to the divine word or voice of God, seeing its opposites, seeing through the eye of the needle, the elements that God is always talking to you through nature and hearing it and listening to it and obeying it and shifting out of it. Jesus calls it moving mountains. I call it shifting timelines, quantum jumping, quantum leaping. Watch this video. It will help you understand the divine feminine and the Vesica Piscis. We end up in our own sphere, now manifesting microcosmically as the amniotic sem, as we prepare to leave the womb of the mother and become a separate being in the world. Our larger cosmic process of spiritual evolution is that we go from being immersed in the one at the divine plane level to descending into cycles of earthly incarnations in order to develop independence and in time to reach our goal of becoming a free agent in the universe. This larger process is mirrored in our conditions in the black cube of physical plane incarnation, which are a microcosm of the macrocosmic journey from unity to independence. Our time in the mother's womb is a microcosm of being immersed in the unity of the divine plane. We feel merged and one with our mother as we float inside a sphere in a liquid ocean. Immediately after our birth, we still feel we are part of our mother, not a separate being. Separation from the mother is the primal wound in physical life. This is our separation from the one of the Godhead is the primal wound in our spiritual life. Both experiences are necessary for us to evolve into our full independent spiritual potential. However, that fact doesn't negate our very real suffering from this separation. As we complete our inner separation from the mother and our family during our adolescent years, our inner soul life turns to yearning for the lost other, our missing half, the person who will be the target of all of our longing and desire. We want to merge the sphere of our physical separate existence with the sphere of another, creating the Vesica Pisces form, where our bodies and energy fields partially merge into one. Note that in this overlapping of our sphere with the sphere of another, each person then has half of themselves merged in the union with the other inside the Vesica portal and half remaining outside and independent with their own inner life. This is the pattern in the divine mind of our being a spirit of love and freedom. Our love is in the central vesica of union with another, our freedom in the outer part of our sphere. It is also the pattern of the key principle that our life sphere is divided into being half devoted to our own needs and our inner development. That's the outer part of our sphere. And the other half of the sphere is devoted to loving service to other people, where we focus on their needs within the vesica of loving union. There are many vital keys to understanding the sacred geometry of relationships and our own deep yearning and striving for the other who we feel will complete us. The first key is that while the divine plane is about unity, a non-physical plane where everything literally interpenetrates and merges. All physical existence is the exact opposite. It's all about duality, separation, so that the physical plane becomes our sealed alchemical chamber in space and time for us to go through an alchemical change, a spiritual development process in our earthly life. The split of unity into duality is the foundation of the polarities of positive and negative poles that provide energy and movement 
such as in the magnetic and electrical systems on the physical plane. In biological systems, the polarity split becomes male and female genders, which are then drawn together through tremendously powerful subconscious energy attractions to unite and bring forth children, to bring new life into the world. Even in couples of the same gender, powerful complementary polarity dynamics are still in play. Ancient traditions knew that this polarity split and the resulting attraction between opposites to unite and return to the center is the origin of all change, all movement, and life itself. The macrocosmic primal polarity yin-yang split is reflected microcosmically in the male-female split. In the Indian Vedic system, this is seen as Shiva, ultimate consciousness, united with Shakti, ultimate energy. The cosmic yin and yang energies, which allow our individual spirit core to manifest as a child on the physical plane, manifest microcosmically through our mother and father. The very beginning of modern psychology like the separation of our mother, when we reach a certain age, I call it 12 years old spiritually, we shift out of a lower realm of water into a higher realm of fire. We separate from the earth and from our physical body. And like an embryo, we double again. But this time it's invisible. It's not in the physical. And we form another vesica piscis. And it's very much likened to Odin putting one eye in the lower realm while the other eye is in the heavens. This means we have been born again. We have a double self. We have a self here and a self that is connected to God. Connecting to that self and using that self will help you become a seer. Activating your double self is like the story of Odin. Mimer was a seer. And Mimer's head was cut off and still spoke the voice of God. Cutting off our head is an allegory or a metaphor of cutting off the physical idea of this world and connecting our heart to truth through that invisible mother. And these symbols are seen everywhere, these two rings of power and how we go through in every single new upgrade or life, whether we are in the womb or whether we are doubling our spirit, this vesica piscis are the two rings of power of Solomon. And the two rings of power are all about our growth spiritually. You can see we begin with a circle. Then it goes to the vesica piscis. Then it goes the, to the, the, the triangle. This is the triangle of invisibility. Then it's the pentagon. And then we go to the pentagram and then the hexagon and then the seven days of creation, the seven chakras, the seven spirits of God and the seven seeds of life, which we grow to. Now, the boat is also connected to the boat of Ra, which is connected to the 12 gates. If you look into the 12 gates, you will see some symbolisms in your art of people holding a star in their hands and the snake on the boat and how each realm is a shift of, of reality. Really, the boat is about, if you've been born again, you can go on this boat two by two. And if you get in the boat two by two, you will get a spirit guide in the form of an animal. And we were in the body of Christ where we had to die before we die, resurrect, be born again, and have a double self, the seven wounds of Christ with the seven spirits of God, activating our seven chakras through the seven colors of the rainbow, the coat of many colors, and becoming invisible through the Trinity. But once we have done that, then we are 12 years old. This means that we are ready to leave just as Jesus left the Bible at 12. And we leave 12 hours, 12 months, 12 zodiac signs, and the 12 gates. When we leave the 12 gates, we have left um, the world of sin. The god of the moon was named sin. So we leave shame, ignorance, and narcissism behind.
and we go to become powerful, to awaken. But in order to actually make it on this boat, we have to become invisible through the eye of the needle. And then you will become as powerful as Christ if you can surrender the ego and allow the heart to lead, which is the mother. And this is the story of the Egyptian book of Gates as well. It's a process. And according to your art, you are a seer. There's some things that we have to understand as a seer. Our mind works like a computer. Focus on the negative world. Your mind will actually go there and be part of that program. Seek first the kingdom of God. Then all truth will come unto you and be added unto you. You now are in a world where you can focus on truth and find it. You want to connect your mind to King Solomon? You can. Seeing before you see is something I see in your piece, where you are actually visualizing it before you even put it on paper. Seeing an angel in your head, doing the work for you, and knowing that it's not you who's doing it. Since you've been born again, you have a double illuminated self that is invisible, that is like your spirit guide, like an animal in the ark, who will work through you. You must believe in magic. You must believe that you have this power and that the answers will be there. It takes a lot of practice to see the opposites, to see the numerology, to see the synchronicities and the communications of God. You may end up seeing something in your mind or your head before you even see anything on the paper, and you may be very psychic. That's something I'm lacking personally. The rainbow bridge that you see here is uh, that your mind can go on an invisible rainbow bridge through the energy of the sun. And this is the circle with the dot in the center. This is the spiritual plane. You have the ability with your mind to cross a spiritual bridge and actually contact God and all the ascended masters to be a seer. Really realizing that there's only one piece of you that's in this reality and there's another half of you that's in the sun that can work through you and speak through you and help to transform you from Gandalf the Grey to Gandalf the White. Because your cap looks like a Gandalf cap, and it's kind of grayish. And you will be led to becoming Gandalf the White. Now your mother is giving you a kiss and showing you a rabbit that is looking at itself in the mirror. This reflects the rabbit hole. We are in the year 2023. It is the water rabbit. The water rabbit is connected to the ark and the water rabbit is the white hair the white hair of noah the bible says that when noah the days of noah return the messiah will return when the messiah returns this is the christos of christ manifesting within the physical body spirit manifesting within the body crystallizing within the body and we get to know the truth we awaken it's the great awakening so notice how this thing around your neck goes down like a tie and is connected to the wand of this individual that looks like the Persian king. And notice it has the letter S like Solomon, but it says C like Solomon. Now there is a communication of your Taurus field, making sure that you do not connect your Taurus field to the world of lies, the world of the jinn the world of the operating Thetans that want to take your mind and manipulate it into a program. Be careful of that. There also seems to be a symbol in your piece that we are advanced robots, like the movie Avatar, and we bounced our consciousness into these bodies for whatever reason, and there's some strange nanotechnology that looks like a SIM card, and this SIM card came here to get advanced. I'm not sure I'm correct about that, but that is what is in your art. So the cow mirroring the cow, this is Gaia. The original God was the God R from Armenia. 
and he was called our father who art in heaven it is the opposite of how the name ra is spelled and the goddess is named haya h-a-y-a but they changed the name haya to gaia and gaia is a cow so when we see the cow as a reflection in the water this means that our consciousness is in an illusion like a hologram a program but the original cow and our original mind is in the sun and it is eternal it lives forever if our self is in a program and in an illusion then we don't know ourselves but if we can cut away the program and the lies and reconnect to our original truth that we are no one and everyone we are nothing and everything we will never sell body and soul to lies we seek truth then our minds will get connected to the truth mind which is a higher realm so when we pass our consciousness goes into that truth which never changes it is a collective consciousness therefore we never die so we can see the lower realm the world of illusion is dominated by this persian king a lie and then you are in the world above with the dragon one world is the water the other is the dragon just like the solomon symbol water and fire the ring of power was found in the water and then it went through the fires of mordor there's many stories that talk about we come from water or fish people and then we went to fire. So the Christian mythology is we go through the baptism of water, then the baptism of fire. So think about these opposites when you're becoming a seer. Look for the opposites first. The male, the female, the illusion, the truth. Look for sacred geometrical shapes. Is it in the shape of a box? Is the box open? Does it look like a cross? Do you see the vesica piscis? That means truth. Do you see a circle? Usually means a lie. The vesica piscis is always the truth. It is the eye, the eye of the needle. So think about that. Um, think about that and notice how that your um, headdress and the thing around your neck makes the letter Y. And this is the goddess. Her name is Haya. The Dagon tribe called her Emma Yah. The invisible female telling us the truth of who we really are. The Holy Spirit revealing who we are. And if you want to reveal the truth and who we are, we cannot be dominated by an operating Thetan. We have to be in the clear. And I see that you are... Um, Becoming clear, I do see one operating Thetan on your head. And so the recapitulation stone with the boat of you holding the stone is spirit telling you to recapitulate and take back a piece of yourself that was and has been um, stolen, forgotten, um, isolated, something that you haven't remembered, a truth that seems to be covered up. And once you go through the nothing, and become nothing, then you'll be everything and everyone. It's an amazing story. I encourage you to keep going, and I would love to see what you create. These truths hopefully will fascinate and awaken the world. Thank you so much for your reading. I love you so much. Thank you for loving me back. If you would like a reading, go to forestfairy.com.